Hello and welcome to this episode of 8-Bit Unboxing, where I'm going to unbox all the stuff that you guys have sent me uh, back in July of 2017. So uh, let's get right to it. The first package of the month came from J.D. Dixon out of Wichita Falls, Texas, so not too far from where I live. There's a mysterious folder in here, and inside is... Alright, a drawing of me and I guess all my favorite things. Look at that, I'm apparently talking about Futurama, old keyboards, Apple, Duke Nukem 3D, Basic, old disc, Cats, and Commodore. Anyway, uh, let's see what else is in the box. Okay, so there's two microphones. Apparently this game came from Goodwill for 99 cents. But the interesting thing about this game is that it's for the Commodore 128 on the 80 column screen. There were hardly any software titles made for that, and I'm not even familiar with this one, so I'll have to try that out. The other thing here was this cassette recorder, which apparently went with the microphones. Cool, thank you JD. The next box is from Wade Cutler out of Lebanon, New Jersey. So let's see what we have here. Okay, we have some brand new unopened floppy disks. These are double density, so they will work with my 8-bit systems. And these two are high density, so they would work with any 16-bit PC I might ever end up with. Cool, thank you Wade. The next box was sent to me by a Club 100 member. That's a club that still supports the old Tandy Model 100 laptops. This appears to be a special ROM of some sort that adds some built-in software. I'll have to install this in one of my Tandys and see what happens. Thank you, Club 100. Next package is from Kristen Fury out of Medford, Massachusetts. And let's see what's inside. It's an original, unopened, blank Betamax cassette. Cool, I don't have a machine this will work in, but I like collecting old media types and I did not have a Betamax tape, so cool. Okay, so we have a flat box here from Dave LaChapelle. I hope I said that right. Ah uh, yes, this is probably one of the more unusual items I've been sent. If you haven't guessed, it's made by Intel. It's a development board for the 8085 processor. It reminds me of the Kim 1 board for the 6502. Unfortunately, I don't know 8085 assemblers, so I probably won't ever do much with this, but it's certainly a cool piece to own. Thank you, Dave. Okay, so I received two large boxes from Gregory Bruce out of Downingtown, Pennsylvania. And the front picture should be a good indication of what's inside. So let's open it up and have a look. I'm going to have to relocate this box to the ground. Okay, so it has all of the original packing material as well as the keyboard and mouse. And here it is, the Macintosh Classic. I've wanted to mess with one of these for a long time because they have the built-in operating system in ROM, which will hopefully save me some headaches. And here's the second box, and this thing is super heavy. This is going to have to go on the floor too. I get the impression there's a monitor and a computer in the same box. I didn't realize they were ever packaged this way. Here's the computer. I actually ended up having to turn this upside down. And yep, there's the monitor. Let me see if I can attach the stand to it. Looks like there was also an external SCSI CD-ROM in there too. In fact, here's all the stuff that was in those two boxes. So, a big thanks to Gregory Bruce. This next box looks like it was badly abused in transit. Either that or it wasn't packed well. I guess we'll find out. This was sent by Jared Clark out of Iowa. Dang, look at that. Yep, it looks like a severe lack of packing material. So, here's a Mac keyboard with a couple of keys missing. Oh, I found the keys. And here's the main attraction. It's a Macintosh Color Classic. This one's going to need some restoration work for sure, but these are hard to find, so thank you, Jared. Okay, so we've got a little flat box here from an anonymous viewer, or maybe it's Professor X from the X-Men, I'm not sure. So let's see what mystery awaits. I think it's a laptop. I seem to remember somebody offering me a PowerBook, so that's probably what it is. And yeah, here it is, it's a PowerBook G4. I actually don't have any PowerBooks, just iBooks, so this is cool. In fact, I'm surprised how good a condition it's in. Most uh, PowerBooks are dented to pieces these days. That's sort of one of the reasons I prefer the plastic iBooks. So this is great. Thank you, Professor X. I have a little box here from Kevin Vance out of Whitehall, Ohio, and it's already coming open back here, so I guess we'll finish the job. Here's 
And inside are two game cartridges. I love getting game cartridges. I don't even care what system they're for. <laughs> Ok, so it appears to be Frogger and a soccer game for the Intellivision. And I don't even have an Intellivision yet. But I'll still put these on my cartridge shelf. Uh, thank you, Kevin. The next box is from Vank Vank. Sorry, I'm not sure how to say that. Anyway, uh, from San Diego, California. And yes, it's a bunch of original system discs for the old Macintosh series, along with the manuals. I'm getting an unusual amount of Macintosh stuff this month. This will be handy, as I just got one of these cards recently, but I'm still trying to find the floppy drive splitter cable for it. Anyway, very nice. Thank you, Vank. This is another drop shipment from Lauren Millsap. He sends me a lot of stuff. I'm sure it's Commodore related, whatever it is. Okay, it's an easy flash. And I'll be honest, I don't know entirely what this does, but I look forward to trying it out. Thank you, Lauren. Okay, the next box is from Thomas Dravich out of Blackwood, New Jersey. Ah, yes, so this is a box of TI-99 stuff. You know, I'm not sure why, but I have received like six or seven offers this last month for TI-99 computers. But I already have two of them, so I keep having to turn them all down. But what I don't have is any software for the TI-99 computers, so this is what I needed. And it looks like this is uh, something else interesting. A TI-74? I'm not familiar with this model. Clint from LGR probably knows more about it than I do. It appears to run basic, so it may be similar to the Tandy Pocket computers I have. Interesting. So as far as the cartridges, there's Pac-Man, which is uh, in a weirdly shaped cartridge, and then all of these. I bet TI Invaders is a Space Invaders clone. I'll have to try these out. Thank you, Thomas. Next, I have a little box from Rick Seiden, or Seiden, I'm not sure how to say that. Well, I don't feel too bad that I can't pronounce his name correctly because <laughs> he spelled my name wrong, so we're even, Rick. And uh, we have Atari 2600 cartridges, and I don't believe I have any of these titles. I seem to recall I sent him a list of the ones I already had, so he helped fill in the gaps. So this will be great for my 2600 game collection. Thank you, Rick. The next box here is from Tom Fimbers. He sent a very generous box of stuff last month, and so now I'm getting part two, I guess. Yay, packing peanuts. Here's the main attraction. I better dig around in these peanuts to make sure there isn't something else hiding in there. Looks like it's a Mattel Aquarius. This is an interesting little footnote in history. I remember seeing this briefly on store shelves back in the 1980s. So let's take a look in the box. <laughs> so definitely a sign of cheapness when they build the power cable right into the machine because they didn't want the cost of a connector of some sort. And I think the cheapness sort of defines what this computer was about, as I recall it was only slightly better than a Timex Sinclair. Anyway, uh, I look forward to covering this more completely in a future video. Thank you again, Tom. The next box is from Alex King. The shape of this box suggests a keyboard of some sort. Alright, we have a Casio MT-68. I've been wanting to get my hands on some of the MT series Casios, and so far this is the first one I've gotten. I look forward to playing around with this little jewel from the 1980s. Look for a video on my other channel for that. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. Next box is from Aaron out of Kalispell, Montana. It's certainly packed well. It's a Commodore disk drive, but not just any. I've been looking for one of these. It's the original VIC 1541 disk drive that was marketed with the VIC 20. And although it's functionally identical to the dark gray models that went with the Commodore 64, it's still cool to have. And uh, this one needs some restoration, but nothing I can't handle. Uh, thank you, Aaron. This one is from Andrew Nielsen. Uh, this is a mysterious item. It says in television on it. So th this is more in television stuff, even though I don't have a console. <laughs> uh, this is uh, some sort of pass-through cartridge. Ah, voice synthesis module. Neat. And uh, this thing is in perfect condition. It even has a little volume knob or something on it. I have no idea what games this would work with, but still, a neat device. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, this one is from Walter Kenjemi. Man, I'm getting a lot of names this month I can't pronounce. I feel bad. A uh, little note here. You can pause if you want to read it. So I guess this is a Sony Watchman. I already have the little 2-inch model, but it doesn't work. This appears to be much larger. Ah, here we go. What's cool about these is they're actually little CRT screens, but they're inverted in a weird shape. It was actually a very innovative design to make a flatter screen back in the 80s. Let me see if I can get it out of this vinyl case. 
Actually, I think I'm holding it upside down. Yeah, this is the correct orientation. Strange design. Look, an old-fashioned telescoping antenna. Cool. Thank you, Walter. This next one says it's from Atari Age, but it's actually a drop shipment from Martin Vent out of Germany. And I've been chatting with him via email the last few months, and uh, this is a uh, homebrew game for the Atari 2600 that he designed and is now selling. And it's called Assembloids. So I've been real curious about some of these homebrew boxes because I'm about to release a game of my own, and so I'm curious how others are packaging things. This box looks fantastic. And here it is. Check it out. This looks as well made and authentic as something that would have come out during the early 1980s. Very cool. I'll be doing a review on this along with a few other homebrew games in a few weeks, so stick around for that. And thank you, Martin. Okay, so this is one of two corporate donations I accepted this month. There weren't any strings attached to this other than just to show it in a video. And I think it's something I can actually use. So have a look. It's called Quad Hands. It's uh, just one of those helping hands contraptions, but on steroids. It's actually quite heavy, which is good because it won't be sliding around. I think it's made of solid steel. Anyway, I can definitely use this in some of my soldering work, especially when making cables, so you may see this thing again. And uh, there's a link for it down in the description field. Uh, next package is from Randy out of Huntley, Illinois. Ah, yes. This is an old MS-DOS game. In fact, I showed this briefly in a recent video on the Kovac speech thing, since I think it was the first game to support it. But I've never seen the box set for it, so this is quite an interesting box. And yeah, it comes with a floppy disk for the IBM PC. Very nice. Thank you, Randy. Okay, this next one is from Benson out of Tucker, Georgia. Looks like I got a box in a box. These are some Nintendo games. Wow, these look brand new. Uh, they're for the Super Nintendo. Ironically, I don't have a Super Nintendo. Every time I've shown one on here, I've borrowed it from somebody else in town. Still, these will go great on my software shelf. And here's a little note from Benson. Uh, thank you, Benson. This package from Hong Kong is the second corporate donation I received. And much like the other one, I just had to show it on camera. And it looked like something you guys would probably be interested in. This is some very interesting packaging. It's almost like they didn't want me to get inside or see the box. So, here it is. It's called the BitBoy. I guess it comes in different colors. They didn't mark this one, so I guess it'll be a surprise which color I got. Okay, so I guess I got red. And while this looks like a Game Boy clone, it's not. Let me peel off this plastic here. And we'll see if it's charged up since this has an internal battery. Yep, it's got power. So what this is, is essentially a regular NES in a portable format with 129 built-in games. So uh, here's Super Mario Bros. 3. The screen actually looks really nice, way better than a Game Boy screen or even that Game Boy clone I showed recently. It also has a composite output for your television, which I'll have to try later. This is pretty cool. I'll cover this in more detail in a few weeks, so stick around for that. Phew, this next box was so heavy, I decided to open it in the living room instead. The FedEx driver told me that some oil leaked out of another package that was sitting on top, so hopefully that didn't damage anything. This is from Noah Kelly out of Memphis, Tennessee. He said this was actually packed by the FedEx store, but I'm not very impressed with their packing job. Anyway, what we have here is a Commodore PET. The funny thing is, I've actually always wanted one of these, but I've avoided buying one because I don't really have the room for it. But when Noah offered this to me, I simply couldn't turn it down. Not only that, but I've been wanting to do a mini-series on the Commodore computers, and I thought it would be cool to start off with a pet. Anyway, here it is. I'll power it on and do the smoke test. Okay, so it does work. The screen seems uh, quite dim. I tried adjusting the brightness, but it didn't help. Still, it is readable. This thing is going to need some restoration work too, but still, it's a pet. This is like the ultimate in collector's items for a Commodore enthusiast. Now I just have to figure out where to put it. Maybe my wife will let me keep it in the living room? <laughs> anyway, a big thanks to Noah. Next box is from Ifan Gu, and I used Google Translate to help me pronounce that, so I hope it's right. Uh, so this is an interesting contraption. I can't say I've ever seen one of these before. It's like a laptop, but it runs the old Palm operating system. Oh look, it's got a stylus on the side too. Okay, so it can do full screen. 
Neat, and it's got a little holder for the stylus too. Apparently this thing is somewhat modern as it has USB and SD card readers on the back. I'll have to do some research on this thing. Uh, thank you, Ifan. Okay, we have a little package here from Norway. I seem to have a lot of viewers from there. Maybe I'll have to uh, visit Oslo someday. So let's see what Chris has sent me. This is another package that's completely mummified in duct tape, but I'll get inside eventually. All right, it's a stylophone. I've heard of these, but never actually seen one. And I guess it's called that because it's played with a stylus. So you'll probably see this eventually on my other channel. Anyway, thank you, Chris. Next, I have a crumbling bag here from uh, George in the United Kingdom. I'm not sure what's in here, but I'm skeptical if it survived as it feels like it's in a million pieces. Oh, it's uh, VIC-20 cartridges. That explains why it felt like it was in many pieces, because it is. Oh, and uh, tape games too. So uh, yeah, here's everything that was in there. I did not have any of these cartridges, so that's cool. And uh, I'm not sure what you would use this for exactly. I mean, obviously it's for connecting more than one cartridge. I'm just not sure how that would work. And uh, here's some interesting looking games on cassette. I'm not familiar with most of these, so I'll have to try these out. Thank you, George. Okay, so this is a very odd looking and feeling bag from China. It feels like a bunch of packing foam. So let's see what mysterious item is in here. Oh yes, this is from Andrew Lewis. He told me he was going to ship me a big box of magic erasers for when I do my restoration projects. And I said, why not? So yeah, I guess I'll find out if these are as great as everyone says they are. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, so I have a box here from Daniel Bergquist, and let's see what we have. Ah, it looks like I got another VIC-1541 disk drive. You know, that's how these things seem to work. This has been on my wanted list for a long time, and I guess I didn't realize I had been chatting with two separate people this month about one of these. I guess I'll open it up here and see what condition this one's in. Okay, so yeah, not too bad. I think I can clean this up. Here it is next to the one I got a couple of weeks earlier. Uh, surely between the two of these, I can make one really nice one. So thank you, Daniel and Aaron. This box was a dropship from Amazon, and I actually don't know who sent me this. I dug through my emails and Facebook messages, and I remember somebody offering this to me, but I simply cannot remember who it was. So I do apologize for that. But anyway, it is some deoxit uh, contact cleaner. I've been needing some of these for uh, some of the restoration projects I do. Uh, so a uh, big thanks to whoever it was that sent this to me. And this package from Neil Riesk is the last one I received in July. It looks like he sent me some artwork here and a little note on the back. Cool. Maybe he can draw me some box art for my upcoming game. So let's see what else is in the box. Cool, a Pac-Man mini arcade. I've only ever seen one of these once. Let's take it out and have a look at it here. If I remember correctly, these things use some sort of vacuum fluorescent display. He said this one doesn't work, so I'll probably have to make an attempt to repair it. Anyway, this is cool, so thank you, Neil. Well, I hope you guys found that interesting. I uh, would always like to get this video out on the first, but it seems like there's always something stopping me from doing it. In this particular case, it was the um, documentary crew from the, uh, the Commodore story, and they were here um, filming a little bit about me, and they're gonna be traveling all over the world filming people, and uh, that's supposed to premiere in uh, December of this year. So um, look forward to that. I think that's gonna be a great documentary. So um, anyway, um, see you next time.